We as entrepreneurs in the African EdTech ecosystem are always hustling to crack the nut on business models that will work. Given the issues and complexities to build business to consumer models, many of us are exploring institutional learning. Like many aspects of innovation on the continent, we think it all comes down to context. At Mosabi, much of our learning is geared towards the training and skill development of independent, grassroots, informal workers for better financial and business knowledge. But there are vast segments of many markets where corporate and institutional training initiatives are not only aimed at salaried employees, but also at networks of these independent entrepreneurs. Because Mosabi works squarely in financial inclusion, Many of the financial service providers use agent banking models in this fashion. So when designing uh, the employability program, so what we had in mind was looking at both ends. So the employers and the participants, what would success look like for them? And for the employers, we wanted them to recognize the importance of hiring disadvantaged youth and actively recruit from those areas. For the participants, we wanted them to be able to actively look for jobs with professional CVs and shine in the interviews. We also wanted them to have realistic expectations of jobs and careers, enjoy positive relationships with managers, and demonstrate basic information about the industry. At the companies that are today providing their solutions directly to companies and other organizations are leveraging on a business-to-business -business approach or a B2B model. Now, it could be argued that they have a more straightforward model compared to other edtech companies that sell uh, directly to the consumer, for example. This could be the case because when it comes to building a profitable or a revenue-based model in edtech here in Africa, one of the bigger considerations is willingness and ability to pay. What we have seen in this space is that much of the population actually needs edtech-based solutions, but they either lack the capacity to pay for it or they are not willing to pay for the same. And this goes back to the hierarchy of needs that we are talking about when it comes to education, that somebody, an end consumer, a parent, for example, will pay for basic educational needs first before they can pay for what is considered supplementary ed tech education. So we've launched the African Coding Network. And what this is, is it's a collection of coding schools across the continent who will work together to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of training young people for tech careers. And, and we hope to prove that it's infrastructure that can really help with the efficiency of training young people for high productivity careers. Our platform also extends into the employment space so people can continue to learn and they can upskill on the job. Because of course, in a short accelerated bootcamp program, young people can't learn everything that they need for their career. Our goal is just to accelerate them so that they can become economically active. I believe that e-learning is um, has a lot of benefits from accessibility to affordability to flexibility. Uh, but I also feel that the most important of all aspects of e-learning is the reporting and matrix. With e-learning, an organization is able to see whether a staff member um, assigned to a course is doing the course, um, actually engaging with the course, completing the course, uh, but most importantly, meeting the learning outcomes set for the course. But the edtechs can leverage the new technologies and not just the technology, the new models, to reach this new market. And this market, you know, certainly is the biggest market in Africa. You know, so when you think of Africa and how we can leverage, you know, technology to digitalize the entire process, you know, of learning, you know, mentoring, on the job coaching, job transition, virtual internship, and everything that surrounds workforce development, think about it this way. Technology is going to play a very huge part. However, you know, the bigger part is going to be by creating new models to drive um, value offering for these new communities.